All right, what's happening, everybody? It's your boy Akeen, and welcome to today's vlog. I'm here to give you my NFC North grades for their picks of this year's NFL draft. I'm going to start with the Super Bowl champion, Green Bay Packers. They had a good draft. They ended up increasing and upgrading this offensive line to help out the running game. Last season, the Packers were 24th in the league in rushing. In the first round, they picked up Derek Sherrod, the offensive tackle out of Mississippi State. He is a, re a relentless offensive tackle who has a good drive blocking ability, and for the run game. I really like this selection. And in the sixth round, they picked up Caleb Slanderroff, the guard out of Utah. He's a good run blocker as well. And both players can be great protection for Aaron Rodgers. So I do like these two picks. In the second round, they picked up receiver Randall Cobb out of Kentucky. He's an all-purpose receiver who they could also use as a running back as well. And a slot receiver and a return specialist. He could do it all. I really like this selection. In the third round, they picked up Alex Green, the running back out of Hawaii. I like this pick as well because last season, he rushed for over 1,000 yards while receiving over 500 yards. I really like this pick because Aaron Rodgers has another option to throw to. He could be a great backup for Ryan Grant. Now, I'm not going to doubt James Starks, the other running back, who is very reliable in the playoffs. He could be James Starks could be a good third down back and have a good rotation with Green and Ryan Grant. I do like this the selection of Alex Alex Green though because he could be an all-purpose back in the NFL. I do like that pick. Now in the fifth round they picked up Mackey Award winner um, DJ Williams, the tight end out of Arkansas. Last season, Jermichael Finney missed all the season due to a knee injury, and they really need a, need a good backup. They could even use both receivers in a double tight um, formation. I do like that pick. DJ Williams has soft hands, and he has good route running ability for a tight end, and I think he could be a good passing threat in the NFL. So overall, I have to give the Packers a B for their draft. They had a good draft. Great job. Now I'm going to talk about their arch rival, the Chicago Bears. They had a, a pretty confusing draft in my opinion, but their first round pick was a good pick. They picked up Gabe Karimi, the offensive tackle out of Wisconsin. He was the Outland Trophy winner and an All-American. Jay Cutler definitely needs some protection. Last season he was sacked 52 times while throwing 16 interceptions. That's pretty bad, so he really needs some help in that line of scrimmage, and Gabe Karimi can definitely be that help. Now in the second round they picked up a good valuable defense tackle Stephen Paye, the defensive tackle out of Oregon State. He was last season's Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year, and he holds the record with 49 reps at 225 pounds bench press at the NFL Draft Combine. So we all know he's very powerful. He has very aggressive hands, and he has a violent attitude while he's in the line of scrimmage. This was a decent pick for the 3-4 scheme, but last season, um, I, last season I believe that the Chicago Bears had a good year defensively, and I think they should have addressed more on the offense line or receiver opposite of, John, of of Johnny Knox, but they went with a good defensive tackle, and he is pretty valuable, so I'm not going to hate on Paye's pick. Now, in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth round, their next picks, they had some confusing picks in my opinion. They picked up Chris Conti, the safety out of California. He could work alongside Daniel Manning, but I did not really like this pick. He was first team all Pac-10 and had 72 tackles. He blossomed this season, but I don't think the, the uh, Bears really needed a safety. And in the fifth round, they picked up quarterback Nathan Anderley, the quarterback out of Idaho. He's a good quarterback, but I don't think that uh, Jay Cutler needed a backup because Calvin Haney had a good NFC Championship game, and I, he showed me that he had the potential to be a good backup in the NFL. Might even start some games. He showed a lot of heart in that NFC Championship game. Yes, he threw two interceptions, but he played hard, and he did not give up in that game. He had a good game against the Packers in that NFC Championship matchup. He showed me that he could be Cutler's decent backup, and I don't really think that uh, the Bears should have went with the quarterback with their fifth round pick. And in the sixth round, they picked up JT Thomas, the outside linebacker out of West Virginia. Yes, he could work well alongside Lance Briggs and um, Brian Erlacher. They could be the monster of the, of the modern monsters of the midway. But I didn't really like that selection. I really think they should have went focus on the offensive line and get, a, get a, another receiver opposite of Johnny Knox for Jay Cutler to have another option to throw to. So overall, I have to give this team a C-. minus. Now, I'm going to talk about the Detroit Lions. They probably had the best draft in the NFL, especially with their first round selection. They had the number 13th overall, and they picked up a steal. Nick Fairley out of Auburn. I do not understand how he dropped that low. He's going to work alongside Dominican Sue in their 4-3 defense. Having Dominican Sue and Fairley in that line of scrimmage, 
that is going to be ugly for offensive linemen and headaches for offensive coordinators. These two are relentless players and aggressive, and I think both players will cause havoc in that line of scrimmage. I do not understand how he dropped the 13, and this was a steal for them. And in the second round, they picked up a good receiver, Titus Young out of Boise State. He could work opposite of Calvin Johnson. He could be a great slot receiver and a return specialist. He could be used in the return game. He had a couple of punt returns back for touchdowns in his collegiate career. I really like that selection. And their second, their second, second round selection, they picked up Michael Ashore, the running back out of Illinois. He could be a backup to Javid Best or even have a one-two punch combo and have a good one-two running back tandem. He's a powerful back, 230 pounds, and he can catch the ball outside of the backfield. While Javid Best missed most of the, some of the season due to injuries, he just rushed for over 500 yards last season, and he didn't really show any promise last year in my opinion. Yes, he had one good game, but he really needs a good backup with him to give him just a little bit more competition and have him work harder, and Michael Little Short can definitely start for this team when needed. I really like this pick. Now, in the fifth round, they picked up a good outside linebacker out of Syracuse, Doug Hugan, he's a great player. He was first team all Big E's. He runs a 4'6'40 at 235 pounds and had 95 tackles last season. He had a great career at um, Syracuse. I really like this selection. They really need some help with the linebacking core, and he could be that, that number one guy. He could be the leader of the linebackers. And in the seventh round, they picked up another offensive tackle, Johnny Colbert out of South Carolina State, to just to give um, J um, Brad, uh, not Bradford, I was about to say Sam Bradford, but Matthew Stafford some more protection, and I really like their picks. They picked up a couple more weapons for Matthew Stafford, and they increased that defensive line to help out the run game. Dominican Sue and Nick Fairley are going to be beasts in the NFL, in my opinion. I can see it coming. Dominican Sue getting more sacks, Nick Fairley getting behind the line of scrimmage. He had over 20 tackles for loss last season, people. Why... You just gave the, the, the they just gave the Lions just a great pick. It's just gonna be. It reminds me so much of the Julio Julio Jones pick for uh, the Atlanta Falcons. Him and Rody White working together. That's gonna be crazy. And this Dominican Sue and Nick Fairley. I really like this selection. So overall, I would have to give the Lions an A. They had a great draft. Good job. Probably the best draft in the league. Now, last but not least, the Minnesota Vikings. They had a decent draft. I'm not going to hate on them. But their first round selection was a little bit confusing. Kristen Ponder, the quarterback out of on Florida State. Yes, the Vikings needed a quarterback, but they didn't. They should have never picked one that early. They're going to end up giving Christian Ponder more duck, more ducats, more dollars. They could have picked them up in the second round, in my opinion. There's still a couple of good second round quarterbacks, but they went with him, and I do like that selection, but they could have got him in the second round. I really think they should have went with the defensive end with this pick, but still a decent pick. Now, in the second round, they picked up Kyle Rudolph, the tight end out of Notre Dame. Him and Fasante Sanko, who's getting, who's getting up into old age in the NFL, could be a great combination. And he could be the replacement for Shanko in the later years. And in the fourth round, they picked up Christian Ballard, the defensive tackle out of Iowa. Now, Iowa had a sick D-line last season with Adrian Claiborne, Carl Klug, and Ballard in that defensive line. And Ballard is a reliable player. I think he can, he can help out the D-line for the Vikings. And in the fifth round, they picked up a D Decent um, cornerback, Brandon Burton out of Utah. And in the sixth round, they picked up two offensive linemen to protect Christian Ponder in the future. And I, I do like these picks. They're solid picks. Demarcus Love out of, of Arkansas, the offensive tackle. He blocked for Ryan Mallett for the past couple of years at Arkansas. He's a good blocker. He needs to refine his technique, but he's still a decent blocker and a good project. And Brandon Fusco, the center out of Slippery Rock. Slippery Rock. Yeah, I know it's a lower division school, but he has great athletic ability for a uh, center, and he has a great upside. He was my number two center coming into this year's NFL draft. He was a great, he's a great player, and I think he could be a reliable center for the Vikings. And in the seventh round, they picked, they finally picked up the defensive end, DeAndre Reed out of Arizona, the third Arizona defensive end to be picked in this year's NFL draft. He's a decent player, but I kind of understand why they picked the defensive end this late, because Ray Edwards might not leave the Vikings, and they still have Jared Allen as well. So both of those two could work well together with Reed. And in the seventh round, they pick up another weapon for on the for the Vikings, Stephen Burton, the wide receiver out of West Texas A&M. He's a good player, and I think he could be another weapon for Christian Ponder in the future, but we will see. Now, for tomorrow's video, I'm going to talk about the AFC West division and give you my grades for them. Thank you for watching today's vlog. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.